So while we're here in the uh, <coughs> quote unquote space plane hangar, because yeah, that's a spaceship, isn't it? The Winford Oak Cake. I'd like to share with you uh, some of the descriptions I've been writing about my uh, aircraft so far. Here we are, the Winford Oak Cake. Kerbal Kind's first airplane, underpowered and serving no purpose other than getting a Kerbal off the ground for the first time. The Oak Cake is nevertheless the most famous plane on Kerbin. Look at it, another diddy little thing. Beautiful, it's a beautiful little machine. Well, except from the sort of Explorer probe core there, but that that's needed for guidance. Ah, now here's a plane that you've actually, I've never actually uh, recorded with. This is a Winford Oak Cake, but it's uh, the Mark II version, so it's a... Uh, a bit bigger. Let's see here. Look, it's a larger version of the classic oak cake. The Mark II is a practical aircraft and the chief rival of the Kerbling of Kerbling and their Skycar model. Hmm. And here is the aforementioned Skycar. Look at that. The world's first twin-engine two-seater airplane. The Skycar was also the first work-ready machine to take to the skies, providing Kerbal with Kerbal industry with a means to transport personnel and material across their small civilization. The Skycar elevated airplanes on Kerbin from a novelty to an essential. You see, it's, 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 by the way, I apologise if I've, um, uh, you know, incorrectly spelt any of those words there. I probably have. It's just like, I, I should really check and I, I, I just can't be bothered. What next? And what about this? The Artex Meteor. Last seen on, uh, well, with the uh, Richter von Kerman testing it off, it's the first plane. Practically, I mean, look at it. it Artex's first plane practically exploded out of its hangar. Its massive engine sending its aloof test pilot Richter von Kerman soaring into the sky, fast, uncontrollable, and inefficient. The meteor symbolizes the experimental early days of aviation, where what could be done outweighed why should it be done. Isn't that great? A real, genuine sort of. Uh, Ambition in the early days of aviation here on Kerbin. Just, you know, what can we do with it with this new technology? Where can it take us? And um, there's several um, byproducts of the Artex Meteor. There's the Meteor 2 here, which is a bit more efficient. You see, uh, the Meteor was 48 minutes um, delta V. It was, yeah, worth of fuel. This is one hour uh, and, and uh, 10 minutes. So you see that the original Meteor was only, uh, what was it, 47 minutes? Of fuel. This is one hour and ten minutes because uh, the engine's been scaled down. Now, the only difference between this and the original Meteor is the engine, which has been scaled back for greater efficiency and control. The Meteor 2 is Artex, Artex's first practical airplane. Wonderful. I think there's uh, another version of the Meteor. Yes, here we are, the Super Meteor. That's even less efficient than the original Meteor. In fact, I don't think any pilot has flown it yet. We'll have to, we'll have to send a good old Richter out. I don't know if it'll be very controllable, though. Because some at Artex thought their original place wasn't... What? Oh, hang on. There we go. Because some at Artex thought their original plane wasn't outrageous enough, a version of the Meteor was made that completely did away with purpose and control in favour of speed, speed, speed. Nah, I wouldn't like to be on the front of that. Probably, probably all the flesh from your face will be torn off by the wind. Now let me show you a new plane that I've recently come up with. It is the stark opposite of the Meteor, the Glacier. And just look at the burn time on the engine, three hours. You can barely get up into the air. Look at this, oh good lord. Wrote a bloody essay. In response to criticism that their retinue of aircraft consists purely of flashy, superfluous machines with no practical purpose to serve, Artex set about designing a fuel-efficient long-range vehicle. The Glacier was the final product, and its efficiency comes at the cost of it not being much faster than just walking to your destination. Fortunately, Kerbals are lazy, and were it not for that intrinsic shortcoming, the Glacier would have been a complete waste of resources. Well, there is that, and there's also the fact that Kerbals cannot walk on water. Look at that. I mean, it's, 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 I think it's a very attractive little airplane. It's, it's quite fun to fly. But yeah, you're not going to get much height from it, and you're not going to get much speed from it. But you will go far in it. Right, what next? Oh, the uh, I haven't seen. Uh, yes, here we are, the Artex Rosso. I mean, just look at this machine. I've never, I've never recorded with this one either. We'll, we'll have to amend that. One hour and twenty minutes of burn time. That's actually not bad. I mean, for a you know a twin engine. And look at that. It has a closed canopy here. Very uh, unusual, I think, for the early aviation days. 
Let's have a look what it says. More of an experiment than a plane, the Rosso is the world's first closed canopy aircraft. Though its expense... What? Oh, God, 19,000? Well, 20,000, pretty much. All right, though its expense and lack of anything superior than its peers render it an impractical, albeit comfortable, airplane. Well, yes, I suppose that's why I've never really used it. I've used I've used it in test flights. In fact, I think it might have taken... Um, gone and taken a bit of scientific data, but uh, I've never used it extensively because other airplanes are faster and... Uh, uh, well, the, the, the Sky Oxen, of course, which is far more... Uh, it's got more fuel time than anything, except from the Glacier. I think that does it for Artex's... Uh... Oh, there's the Test Flyer, but that's just... Uh, it's just... It, it, it's just a version of the meteor. In fact, I've, I've written it down. A modified meteor designed to test experimental components. I've just been using it to fulfill contracts. It's been quite good at it, though. All right, I think it's the Kerblings next. Oh, no, we've done the Kerbling sky thought. Well, here we are. The beast. Look at that, nearly 60,000 uh, money. I don't know what the what the credits are. I don't know what the, uh, the Kerbal currency is called. Just look at the size of it in comparison to a Kerbal. It's, it, it's, it's enormous. And very, very uh, inefficient in its engine. And plus, once you start losing a bit of speed on it, it, f you know, falls to the ground. A bit like... Touching down. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that, that's the Sky Ox in, in a nutshell. Let's read the description. A monster of a plane. Yes. No. Uh, quite, quite astute past me, isn't he? The Sky Oxen pushes the limits of practical design to provide exceptional long range for such an early aircraft. Heavy and costing a fortune. <laughs> you can just say that again, I think it nearly bankrupted me. The Sky Oxen has nevertheless proved its worth by sending early Kerbal aviators to new lands across the ocean. You'll remember that. Oh, that was a good episode, I enjoyed that one. Let's look at that. Look at this strange little machine, and look how tiny it is, and look how cheap it is compared to the, um, the, the Sky Oxen. It's like a fraction of the price. Anyway, Winford are, of course, the designers of the world's first airplane, the Oatcake. In keeping with their pioneering tradition, the Flapjack is Kerbin's first triplane and answers many problems presented by contemporary aircraft. It is cheap, maneuverable, exceptionally fast, able to fly at high altitudes, and makes use of new technology. Does he? Oh, I see, with the, 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 with the swept wings. And a little uh, life support module there. It's very good. Uh, the precision engineering and attention to detail in the flapjack designs threatens to render all other vehicles obsolete very quickly. Indeed, there's just so many things that this plane can do in the test flights that, that I just wonder about the um, the shelf life of other aircraft that I've made. It's quite sad, really. What? Oh. Oh, is that it? Right. Uh, join us next time when something dramatic will happen. Oh. <coughs>